Well, if you like Big 12 football, and this is the final time Oklahoma is going to play in any Big 12 conference games unless they backdoor themselves into the Big 12 title game next week, uh, you got your you got your money's worth as Oklahoma beat TCU 69-45 in what was the epitome of the last decade of Big 12 football. Uh, a combined score of 114 points, folks. 114 points. That's a lot of points on the board and a lot of crappy defense, and we got to see it all take place here as Oklahoma is now 10 and 2 on this season, uh, waiting to see what they do. You know next week as far as whether they're going to play in the Big 12 title mm -hmm. game and or what bowl game they will be invited to. I know that the Alamo Bowl was sitting in the post-game presser today, witnessing, watching, you know, showing face. So that that is an option on the board and a likely option, actually, for Oklahoma moving forward unless they slide into that top 12 spot where they can get in a New Year's Six Bowl. But we'll see. We'll see how it all plays out over the next few weeks. My name's Brandon Drum. I'm here with my man, Brian Clinton. Uh, this is the OU Insider. Instant reaction of the Sooners 69-45 win. Brian, what's your initial thoughts on today's game? So, it's almost poetic justice that a team that has dominated the Big 12 Conference goes out in its final regular season game having to win the game offensively. It just yeah. felt... This is a, you know, dating back to this team under Josh Heupel, Lincoln Riley, I mean, going further back even than that, Oklahoma's been the offensive standard in the Big 12. And uh, today it was just another another showing of that uh, 69 points, the second highest uh, of the to uh, total of the season outside of their season opener against Arkansas mm -hmm. State. Um, and this was a game where it felt like there was a lot of uncertainty coming into the game. You didn't know who the quarterback was going to be. Oh, you did uh, if you were on OU Insider. You, you did. You did if you were on OU Insider. But lots, lots of people that weren't sure who the who the quarterback was going to be. And, and Dylan Gabriel comes out, leads just an offensive clinic, uh, 607 yards. He has 400 yards passing, has four total touchdowns. It was fantastic from from Gabriel. And then the defense. Uh, yes, I mean much maligned throughout most of the game, but. Good second quarter. Billy Bowman has another pick six. Mm -hmm. And totally, if there was any momentum whatsoever for, for TCU at that point, uh, it was completely, it was quelped at that point. I mean, he he, he came up get a big again, and, and, and Oklahoma found a way to to still win this game by 24 points. You knew it had to feel good for this group after, yeah. after what Oklahoma, uh, what happened to them last year in Fort Worth. So the three best offensive performances of the year, come against the three teams that they lost to last year mm -hmm. um, in Texas, obviously, West Virginia, and now TCU here to finish 10-2. Yeah, it was a great performance. Again, Gavin Sawchuk with his four straight. Thanks for the backwards hat there. I didn't have my hat on today. <laughs> it's down here, but didn't wear it. No backwards today. Uh, love to hear the comments on that. Um, but Gavin Sawchuk, his fourth straight 100-yard game, he – Eclipsed, he got 130 yards, which is his record now in a game, which, again, this guy has transformed the OU run game. I, as far as just the talk right now, we can talk about the defense here in a minute, but I, I think the biggest play of the game, without question, was the fourth and, what, two and a half, three? Yes. Um, where Oklahoma decides they're going to go for it over here on the minus side of the inside the 40 yard their mm -hmm. own 40 yard line and they run a speed option to the wide side of the field and dylan takes it i can't remember how many yards it was i believe it was 30 plus yeah. but um that changed the game because at that point oklahoma was struggling to stop tcu tcu was within two scores at that point i believe it was 49 35 or something yes direction. they were yes they were uh i just know they were in 14 yeah four, 14, i can't remember I was, the exact score but nervous. it was a 14 point two score game they needed a big play to happen and that took place oklahoma goes down finishes it off uh goes up multiple uh three score uh, at that point and uh from that point on it just seemed like oklahoma what was they were in control defensively they struggled mm -hmm. um 
they had a good second quarter. It looked like they figured some things out. Even people in my mentions on Twitter were saying, look, they figured some things out. This should be a, a, a shutout as far as this second half goes. Far from it. It was as... Brent Venables called it an abomination of football <laughs> when it came to his defense, and he said that the defense, the offense had to compensate and not complement as far as how they played today. He, he loves complimentary football, and he said that the offense compensated for the inadequacies of the Sooners' defense. All that said, Billy Bowman, Billy, 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 oh, Billy. You know, Billy Madison. Oh, Billy. Um, <laughs> every time I park, I'm laughing because that's where his mind went as well. Um, yeah, that, look, uh, was it Billy Madison or was it Cable Guy? Was it Cable Guy? Cable Guy, I think. Bill, oh, Billy? Anyways, I digress. I'm sorry. I digress on that. Um, look, that guy, that's the second game in a row he's had a pick six. That's a third of the season. He's made big plays when big plays were needed all year long for Oklahoma. He is a surefire first-team All-Big 12, and he was a junior that did not go out on senior day. He had Andrew Raim, which we're going to talk about that on OU Insider VIP, uh, why he went on senior day. And you had Tyler Guyton that went. Both juniors um, were guys that have extra years available to them that went on senior day uh, today. Um, But Billy and Danny Stutzman did not. Something to watch moving forward. I did ask Mm -hmm. Dylan Gabriel straight up, very first question, if you go back and you watch it, our guy Parker Thune will have it loaded up on our YouTube page here pretty soon. Um, Very first question I said, let's get it out of the way. Are you going to stay? And he said, I'm going to be present in the moment. I don't know what's going to happen today, tomorrow, the rest of this week. I'm going to focus on maybe the Big 12 title, all that type of stuff. So Dylan didn't want to answer it. He gave a really cookie cutter answer so did Jeff Levy on when I asked him about the Mississippi State quest uh, vacancy he said I'm focused on this team I'm focused on the present I'm focused on what bowl game we're going to be in and trying to win the Big 12 if they get an opportunity to do so so both gave cookie cutter quest answers to my question on where they're headed uh, in the future whether they're going to stick around at Oklahoma or move on uh, so there's that. We did ask those questions. OU Insider did. Um, but what? what's your, I guess, overall synopsis of this season? Like, if you were going to talk about this season in a paragraph form, how would you describe it? Uh, success, okay. I know 10-2 is really good for a lot of programs. Oklahoma, it happens quite a bit. But what's your take on all that? I would say cautious optimism for the future. Um, There were times, there were stretches in this season where Oklahoma really struggled on the road. Uh, We watched this team play totally different football on Owen Field versus what we saw from them, um, you know, whenever they left the confines of Norman. And so I I think that you can look at it if you wanted to pessimistically uh, that there's still some issues that need to be worked out but in the grand scheme of things this team was six and seven last year and this roster uh, which is has vastly changed from when Brent Venables got here two years ago they're they're improving week over week you're seeing improvement from and there's a lot of young playmakers which is Mm -hmm. what's the really exciting part about this is is the guys that are making plays and, and making an impact on the football field are guys that have eligibility and are coming back. Um, Young guys, I mean, just just think about, just for for a short second, Jaden Gibson, Brennan Thompson, and Nick Anderson are all guys that are going to come back next year for the Sooners and are all guys that have multiple years of, of, yes, multiple years of eligibility. And so combine that with with you know whether or not Dylan Gabriel comes back you've got somebody like Jackson Arnold who's going to take the uh, take the reins at some point it's really exciting and and I, I would say again cautious optimism is probably the best way that, that I would explain it uh, 10 and 2 is nothing to shake a stick at it's 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 a really good improvement from last year and and uh, I, I think you take that with a grain of salt and move on I, I would the, the the phrasing I would use is Kind of, you you say cautious optimism. I say 
uh, opportunistic uncertainty. And what I mean by that is you have what's going to happen with Jeff Levy. Is he going to be the offensive coordinator at Oklahoma? What does If he does move on, what does that do to Oklahoma's offensive side of the ball? What does that do to the recruiting class in the 2024 that is loaded with some really top-notch? Does he take Joe John Finley with him? That's been, you know, there's a lot of banter since he followed Zach Selman on Twitter. A lot of different things that could be, I guess... Construed. Con- misconstrued or construed in a positive or negative light, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, but like you said, you have Jackson Arnold if he stays, which I, I assume he's going to stay. Right. I think that's the first thing everybody thinks of is what's Jack's going to happen with Jackson Arnold? Got a girlfriend at Oklahoma. He's got a lot of different things that would lead you to believe that he's going to stay in Norman. Um, number two. Um, Gavin Salchuk, his emergence, uh, the emergence of Jake Sexton to end the year on the offensive line, Caden Green, uh, really young, prosperous players for Oklahoma. You named all the wide receivers for him. Defensively, that last drive, and yes, TCU scored on their last drive, there was, what, six, seven freshmen out there on that drive, P.J. Atabari, um... Wagner. You had Wagner, you had Jacoby Johnson, you had Sammy Omasigo, you had R. Mason Thomas, you had, um, and I know R. Mason's not a freshman, but he's a sophomore. Mm-hmm. You had uh, Grayson Haltom out there, who is a sophomore. You Really young group of guys, uh, Robert Spears Jennings, another sophomore. Jaron Canick's like, still a sophomore. Jaron Canick. <laughs> this team is young, young, young. So to go 10-2 and two after a 6-7 and seven season, to be competing, or at least in, in still mathematically eligible to play in the Big 12 title, I think you got to look at it as a positive moving forward. But uh, there's still some uncertainty. As I said, I think it is a uh, a lot that you wonder what's going to happen through the transfer portal. Who's going to transfer out? Who's going to transfer in? If Oklahoma continues to do what they've been doing, whether in the transfer portal on offense and on defense, you should suspect that Oklahoma's going to come in and at least compete and be a 9, 10, 11 win season next year, their first time in the SEC. So, um, But what a season for Oklahoma. What a season. 10-2, and two, some really upsetting things happened in the two losses versus Kansas. Some questionable things happened in those two losses. But to end 10-2 and two after a 6-7 and seven season, you've got to be really thrilled with it. See what bowl game they go to. If you have an 11-win season after going 6-7, and seven, heading into the SEC, nothing but positive momentum moving forward. Now you've just got to solidify some of the coaching staff issues that are, are potentially could arise moving forward and or some personnel issues that could arise moving forward. And if you do that, I think you're going to win – you know, 9, 10, 11 games mm-hmm. first year in the SEC. And I think that's a good start if you're Oklahoma. Especially with a 12-team playoff. Correct, 12-team playoff. You're in the playoff and that you win nine games in the SEC. So, all right, real quickly, offensive player of the game, defensive player of the game before we close this out. I'll leave your boy to you. I'm going to take DG. I'm going to take Dylan Gabriel in okay. this one. Uh, 400 yards passing, three uh, passing touchdowns, one rushing touchdown. Uh, and what I assume is the final time we're going to see him on – on Owen Field, maybe, Allegedly. maybe not. We'll see. <laughs> um, but I, I'm going to go with him. And, and then uh, I've, I've got to, I, I <laughs> do it, do it, just do it, take it. You know, it's Billy. It, it's Billy Bowman for oh, me. Billy. It's it's Billy Bowman for me. I mean, the guys have back-to-back games now with with uh, with a pick six. I believe he led the team in tackles in this game. Um, he was incredible once again. This is a guy that just he continues to change. The, the pace and change the way that games are played for other uh, with, for, with opposing offenses and that's just that's a guy in the back end that, that he knows how to get everybody lined up and, and it really helps to have somebody back yeah. there playing at the top of their game so he's the best safety in the Big 12 he may be one of the best safeties in the country Billy Bowman's my defensive player of the week. all right I'm gonna choose Gavin Salchuk I wanted to go Drake Stoops because I think that is would have been the right thing to do once you know what? I'm gonna go Drake Stoops Gavin I apologize. Um, Drake Stoops had 12 receptions, 125 yards, and a touchdown in his final game in Gaylord Family Memorial Stadium. Uh, What a career he's had. I think he has 880 yards receiving right now. 
He is 120 away from a thousand yards as a former walk-on. How cool is that? And he's such an iconic figure. Has to be the Bulls, Bulls Brandon Bullsworth uh, walk-on yeah. winner this year. Has to be. And my defensive player of the game is going to be Kendall Dolby at eight tackles, a, a tackle for loss. And he matched up with Jared Wiley, who just set the TCU school record recently in receiving yards. Uh, Wiley only had 39 yards receiving today. He did have two touchdowns, but neither one of them were on uh, Kendall Dolby. So there you go. Uh, he played really well, made some fantastic tackles in open space on Bailey, uh, the TCU running back, who had a big game. Uh, could have had a bigger game if it wasn't for Kendall Dolby stopping him uh, in some big situations as well. So he has been quietly one of the better players on defense and is saving grace for Oklahoma at the cheetah position in the 2023 season. All right, if you're not on OU Insider, go. Like, if you were on OU Insider, you knew Dylan Gabriel was starting back on Wednesday. Yeah, they said they knew on Thursday officially. But I can tell you back late Tuesday night, Wednesday, the confidence was soaring, and we reported that on OU Insider that he was going to play and start this week. Um, it's only $24 right now, 75% off. 75% off gets you a whole year all the way through this SEC season or the 2024 SEC season. If you sign up today, the, the promo ends, the Black Friday promo ends on Monday, so hurry 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 again 25 or 24 dollars excuse me get you OU Insider normally priced at 99 dollars that is 75 dollars off can't beat it a whole year get you through the bowl season big 12 both national signing days all the spring stuff all the official visits all the transfer portal stuff all the champion barbecue the party in the palace fall camp and then the SEC season only $24. That is a deal, deal, deal. And we'll keep you informed on everything, whether team, recruiting, basketball, football, softball, baseball. We have it for you. OUinsider.com VIP, where it's at. Join some thousands and thousands of OU fans that are already on there with us. All right. Oklahoma wins 69-45. They close out the season 10-2. and And what a year after going 6-7. and uh, So for Brian Clinton, my name is Brandon Drum. You guys have a blessed day.